What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the best extensions for working with materials and textures inside of SketchUp Pro. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so note that in this video, we're gonna be talking about tools that you can use in order to work with textures inside of your SketchUp models. If you're looking for some websites where you can actually download materials for your SketchUp models, um, you can check out my guide to that at the sketchupessentials.com slash materials. But in our first spot, we've got the new extension, Architectures. So you can download Architectures for free from the SketchUp extension warehouse. I've talked about Architectures a bunch on this channel. I really like it because what it does is it allows you to access a library of materials directly inside of SketchUp. So there's a ton of materials built in here, everything from um, floors to siding to um, different kinds of tile and ceilings. A lot of these are starting to come in as actual manufacturer products so you can actually download some textures that actually align with real world manufacturers and so let's say that we wanted to bring in a concrete material so we could either bring in one of these materials that's already in here or you can take one of these so maybe like this one right here and you can edit it in order to make it look different so in this case right i've got this concrete material well, you can add something like a pattern to it well if i add a pattern to it so let's say i brought in this basket weave or something like that notice how that's actually going to apply that to this material so you can customize this material notice how you can also adjust the number of rows and columns so if I bump this up, notice how this is gonna create more of these. And you can adjust other things like the tint and all of that, but what I can do is I can click on import. Notice how that's going to create this as a material inside of SketchUp. And then I can just use that material on a surface. So we can use this to either bring in library materials or to create custom materials that you can use inside of SketchUp. So Architectures is one of my top extensions on this list. So this next extension, Through Paint, which you can download from the Sketchication plugin store, is a tool from Fredo 6 that allows you to kind of automate that placement process in a way that works a little bit better. Um, it's currently still available for free. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a move towards paid at any point, but basically what this does is this gives you the ability to um, select a material. So we could activate this tool right here and you could select that material. Well then it's gonna give you different mapping types or different UV types. So if I click in here, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me multiple different ways that I can try to apply this material to this surface. Some work better than others for different shapes, but notice how in addition, I can also click in here and do things like scaling or rotating of the material like this. So if I wanted to rotate this maybe like 45 degrees, I could come in here and do that just like this. So um, this is a really valuable tool. I always have it in my toolbox for these complex shapes. Okay, so next up, if you've ever wanted to swap out every instance of a material for another material in SketchUp, you're going to want this next extension. It's called Material Replacer. Whoops, you can download it from the SketchUp extension warehouse. And basically what it does, and I'm just gonna look for it right here, is it allows you to select a material and then replace it with another material. It's a free extension from TomTom, and you can just come in here and just install it, just like this. So we're gonna say yes. And so what it does is it shows up, and it should show up under your tools. It's called material replacer right here. And so let's say that we wanted a different stone. And one thing you need to know about this is you do need to make sure that um, you have whatever material you wanna replace it with already in your model. But let's say I wanted to replace this whole thing or all of this with a brick material. So we're just gonna place the brick material inside of your model, but now you can run material replacer so notice how it's gonna mouse over this and you can see what material you're selecting, but you can click on replace material and then you can click on the other material to set which material you're gonna replace it with and it's going to replace that material everywhere that it happens inside your model. So massive time saver if you're swapping out materials in your model. Okay, next up, if you've ever downloaded high resolution materials, so um, this is a material from Polyhaven, but Notice how if I swap between the 2K and the 8K, this material file can get massively bigger, right? So depending on the resolutions that you have in here, your file size is going to be different. We're gonna go ahead and bring down the 4K real quick. 
And so if you get a lot of these higher resolution textures inside of your SketchUp model, they can really make your file size big and slow down the way the SketchUp works. Luckily, SketchUp has actually provided us this next extension, which is called Material Resizer. You can download this one for free. It's in the SketchUp extension warehouse. And basically what it does is it goes through and it finds the materials inside of your model that are, um, it, it basically goes through and finds all of the materials in your model and gives you the ability to resize them. So once you install this, what you can do is you can go to extensions, material resizer and notice what this does is this comes in here and it finds all of those different materials. So you can see how this one, for example, is um, basically a 4K texture. Well, what we can do is we can click on this and we can reduce it to maybe like, we'll go with, and so we'll reduce this to maybe a 1024 instead of a 4096. So we'll just type in 1024. We'll click on go. And what this is going to do is this is going to run a script that's going to resize that texture image file inside of SketchUp. So now if I look at that brick paver material, it downsized the image file that it's using to a 1K instead of a 4K. And that would be reflected in your file size in SketchUp. Note that this does actually reduce the visual resolution of a texture in your model. So you wanna be a little bit careful, but if you have a bunch of like 4K or 8K textures, that's just gonna run your file size up anyway. And you don't really need that unless you're doing some kind of crazy rendering. So that extension is a must have for quickly resizing textures in your model. Okay, so next up, we've got a couple of tools that are built into the SketchUp tool Sketch Plus, which is a collection of like 30 plus easy to use tools for SketchUp that add additional functions to SketchUp, like mirrors and other things like that. Well, it's got a material selection of tools that does a couple different things. So probably my favorite in here is the deep paint faces. So if you've ever had to, or if you've ever wanted to replace a material, right? So let's say we wanted to replace the wood on um, on these supports right here, and they're inside of groups, that can be really frustrating because you have to come in here and you can't actually apply it to the outside of the group. So you might have to double click, and double click multiple times to get into the group. And if you have to do that a lot of times, that can get really time consuming. What this does is this allows you to activate the tool and we're gonna select a material first. It's called Deep Paint Faces. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go find the faces that are inside of these groups like this. And it's gonna allow you to apply materials to them even if they're inside of a group. And so one limitation here is if you do have a bunch of curved surfaces, notice how it would make me come in here and apply this to each one of the faces individually because it's going in there and it's finding the faces. So um, there are some pluses and minuses to the way that it works right now. But on the other hand, um, it is a really fast way to apply materials to your nested components, especially if they're singular faces like this. So we've also got a couple other functions in here, like the ability to unpaint all. So for example, if I was to do that, if I was to click on this model right here and click on unpaint all, it would allow me to remove all materials from inside of this model. Um, so if you're like starting fresh or something like that, something I might use that for is as a general contractor, I might remove the materials so I can apply my own, um, something like that. So that is an interesting tool. There's also the ability to unpaint faces and edges. And so where that would be valuable is if I wanted to completely remove the materials that are on the faces in here, because remember that faces always govern, um, what I could do is I could come in here and I could click on unpaint faces and edges for each one of these like this. Well then what that's gonna allow me to do is that's going to allow me, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply nothing to the whole model. But what that would do is that would allow me to then come in here and paint the exterior of these. And there's no faces that's overriding it anymore. So um, I could just apply materials to the outside of those groups instead. So um, it's also got the ability to unpaint groups and components, but leave the paint on faces and edges. So um, those are all useful for grouped objects and material editing. Okay, so this next one is interesting. It's called CLF Extrapolate Colors. Um, it's a tool from Chris Fulmer. And basically what it does is it's going to, um, if you have a selection with different colors in here, and I think it works with materials as well, but if you have a selection like that, that you only paint some things and not others. So say that you've got like a walk or something like this, what it's going to do is it's going to randomly apply those materials to other faces. So um, what it's going to do is if I was to select this whole thing, right? It's going to, within my extensions, it's going to show up in a Chris Fulmer tools, extrapolate colors, but it's going to take those colors and randomly 
apply them like this. And notice how it's only randomly applying them um, to the faces that don't have colors on them. So if I do it again, notice how I'm gonna get a different result. So let's try it one more time. Notice how these results are different every time. So if you wanna add some like color randomization or something like that, this could be a really valuable tool for doing that. Okay, so next up, we've got a free tool from TIG called Texture Randomizer, and it does exactly what it sounds like. You can download it from the Sketchication plugin store, and then the way that it works is, let's say that we had a deck with, um, I've just got the plywood material applied on it, just so you can see. Um, if I was to make copies of this, right? So if I was to copy this like 15, maybe 30 times. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select these objects, and we're gonna go up into extensions and run texture randomizer. We're gonna say yes to include the faces in the groups and components. Now, one thing to note is if you are to use this, you're going to have to make your component instances unique. Um, that can be a little bit of a problem if you are creating these as components, so you can adjust them all at once, but you kind of have to pick one or the other if you're trying to create random textures in here. Um, so in this case, we're gonna say yes, just know that that is going to remove the component functionality from these. But then this is gonna give us the ability to set things things like setting the max and minimum UX and VY, which basically means the position of the texture image on these objects. So we're basically telling it to randomly move this on the X and Y directions by up to 12 inches. And I've gone ahead and I've set the random mirroring to yes on both of these. Um, I don't want it to rotate, so I set that to zero, and I want the scale to stay as is. But if I click on okay, what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna randomly move your materials around on these surfaces so that they're no longer um, tiling over and over again. Now, one thing to note about this is, let's say that I was to create an object like this one. I will go ahead and we'll make it a group, but let's say that I was to apply a material to the outside of it. Notice what I did is I applied this to the outside of the actual um, object, but there's nothing actually on the faces. It's applied to the outside of this object. So see how these faces don't have a material applied to them? Well, what this is gonna do is if I try to run it after doing that, it's not going to work, right? So if I type in times three, make a copy and try to run texture randomizer, it gives me an error because none of my actual faces have textured materials applied to them. So when you create an object like this one, you need to make sure that you apply the material to the face before you run this rather than to the outside of an object. Then if you run it, then notice everything's gonna work just fine. So sketch UV, is a UV mapping extension from Mindsight Studios. You can download it for free inside of the SketchUp extension warehouse. And um, basically what it does is it gives you tools for doing different kinds of mapping to objects. Now I will be the first to say I've not done a ton with this extension. Theoretically what it's supposed to be able to do is it's supposed to be able to allow you to create and save these UV maps for objects which teach SketchUp or show SketchUp how to apply things to certain surfaces. So like for example, this is a very simple example, but when you activate Sketch UV, what you can do is you can right click on an object and tell it which kind of mapping to do. So in this case, right, you could tell it to do a spherical map. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna create that spherical map based on where your camera view is, like this. And there's different kinds of mapping that are in here. So like obviously the box mapping is not ideal for something that's spherical, but you can select these different kinds of maps. And then you can also type in values. So let's say I do a spherical map here. And then I can type in a value of like 45 degrees and it'll rotate this 45 degrees. So if I do 45 more, it's gonna be like this. You can also type in times or divide to adjust the size. So you could type in like times two, times three in order to make it smaller like this. So like I said, I haven't used this tool set much for UV mapping. What I have used it for is this excellent path selection tool. What the path selection tool does, and we're getting outside of materials a little bit, but um, you're probably gonna wanna know about this one. But what the path selection tool does is it allows you to quickly select paths inside of SketchUp by moving your mouse 
and then clicking. So if you're trying to pick up the edges around a selection and then you hit enter to finalize the selection. I use this path selection tool, which is also contained inside a profile builder all the time for selecting the outside of like holes and meshes and other things like that. So you should download Sketch UV and give it a try if for no other reason than to use this path select tool. All right, and then this tool is a kind of an honorable mention in the sense that it's not exactly a SketchUp extension, it's a tool for managing all of your assets. It's called Connector. We've talked about it on the channel before, but basically what it is is it's the tool that allows you to manage and organize all of your different materials. Because a lot of the time what can happen is your material folders, especially if you do rendering, can kind of start looking um, like this big long list of files and you have to click into a bunch of folders in order to access them. This tool allows you to view nested folders inside of files and you can also filter by different types. So for example, I could filter by JPEG um, or any other type that I want in here. So like PNG, you can do that using this tool. So it is very good for helping manage your different material maps um, as well if you're doing like a PBR material workflow inside of your rendering engine or if you just want to get a quick look at all of the files that are inside of your different folders. Um, this makes that really easy to do. And then if you wanted to bring these into SketchUp, it's as easy as just dragging the material over from inside of connector and then you could just right click on it and you could explode it and you can sample it and it's brought in as a material inside of SketchUp. So one other bonus of this tool is it not only allows you to manage materials, you can also manage your uh, SketchUp model files. So notice how, how I can come in here and I can click on different folders in order to see my different models. And you can also sort by format when you do that as well. And so you can filter by format. And again, if you wanna bring these models in, it's just as simple as dragging it out of connector and into SketchUp like this. So it makes it very simple to manage all of your SketchUp assets with one tool. I will link to my guide on some of the best websites for downloading free materials to use in SketchUp. But leave a comment below. Let me know if I left anything off this list. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.